everyone, and welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. I am so excited about the video you're about to see. I was a huge Princess Diana fan, and I recently had the royal pleasure and honor of cooking with her former private chef, Royal Chef Darren McGrady. He's a delightful man. He has a great cookbook I'll tell you about in just a minute. He shares some fun stories about the princess and shows us how to make her very favorite dessert. He even let me help. Check it out. Princess Di, she was beloved by so many and remembered still to this day. And you're in for a real treat because we're going to be talking to Princess Di's chef. The, the photograph you see there was autographed to the royal chef, Darren McGrady. And I'm with Darren right now talking about some memories, some incredible memories yes. uh, of your life cooking for the princess and her boys. I did. I, I spent 11 years as chef to Queen Elizabeth at Buckingham Palace and then uh, four years as personal chef to Princess Diana where I cooked for the princess and William and Harry. Now can you say what you like best? Uh, I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> I think we know the one. answer, but yeah, go ahead. You know, it's so different cooking in the two different houses. Yeah. At, at Buckingham Palace, a banquet could be for 156 people with a king, queen or president. It could be a garden party for 6,000 people on the lawn. Oh my gosh. Now moving across to Princess Diana, uh, you had 10 people around the table and sometimes it was just the princess, William and Harry on yeah. an even smaller table. So everything we read about her was true. I mean, she was more casual, more laid back, more, more kind of like we think we are maybe, you know? She was just the same behind those palace gates as mm -hmm. she was in front of them and she cared about the the staff just as much as she cared about the people. And I've got some photographs to show you. All the royal family uh, have their own menus. So Now this is fascinating. Every night, each royal can have a totally different meal it, prepared ex especially like for It's like being in them. a hotel, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and even the Queen and Prince Philip could be eating in separate rooms and maybe they're entertaining three yeah. or four and, and six and Did ten. Did they do that a lot? Quite a lot, Did yes. They? Yeah. Princess Diana, of course, the D there from Diana in Kensington Palace, that was her menu. Um, and this one, as I said, um, everyone had their own menus. Even the royal corgis had their own menu. Oh my gosh. So if you're wondering what corgis eat, a lot of liver, rabbit, chicken, and beef. They eat pretty good. That's right. <laughs> and it's only rabbit if William and Harry would go out and shoot the rabbit. They really? love to go hunting and they'd shoot the rabbits and bring them back to the kitchen oh and we'd have to skin them. Well, Menus for the dogs, what uh, else? And I then I you. said, you know, talking about the, the princess and how she was just the same with her staff. Yeah. When my daughter Kelly was born, uh, Wendy was in hospital, and this is a note that she sent to Wendy saying, oh. many congratulations on the safe arrival of your little lady, love from Diana. Oh. This is fabulous. Oh. This dish I used to make at Buckingham Palace, and Princess Diana used to come down to the kitchen, and she pick at the raisins in this dish. And this became a favorite, so much so that she told one of the royal reporters that Darren makes the best bread and butter pudding in the world. Uh, now, I'm not sure if it's the best in the world, but I think it's in the top one. But you're going to try this today, OK? So I, you'll be able you're to You're going to get me. my vote, I have a feeling. And you say, really, she liked to eat healthy. So for her, this was a real a step out there. This is small portions, absolutely, okay. yes. Yeah. In, in the book, in my book, Eating Royally, you'll see uh, there's a tomato mousse in one section, uh, yeah. the, the Windsor section, and it has all the creams and, and fat and everything. Good stuff. And she said to me, when I moved across to be her chef, you've got to take care of all the fats and I'll take care of the carbs at the gym. And she was eating healthy, she was working out at the gym, yeah. patron of 119 different charities. So I made a fat-free version for her, and in making this dish, uh, I remember we had people coming for lunch and she'd be on the fat-free version and the guests were on the full-fat oh, version. Oh, really? She had <laughs> so some tricks. Yes, yes, <laughs> Good the for tricks. her. Good for so her. this was one of her favorites. Um, it's, it's a small portion, but it's such a good comfort food that um, everywhere I go, I, I get asked to make yeah. this dish. And it's not difficult, so this it's will be fun. It's not difficult, We no. can do this too. We can. So here I've got some egg yolks. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start whisking the egg yolks, All right. I'm going to put some sugar in there too. You can see there's lots of sugar goes into it. That's okay. And small then, portions, Darren. Small, small portions. portions. And then vanilla paste. And of course, it's completely fat-free until you eat it. Yeah. And right. this vanilla paste, <laughs> by the way, I know you use it a lot. The Madagascar, yes. it's yes. wonderful. I love the Madagascar vanilla bean paste, yes. So here, I'm going to put some diced bread. This is what's different from the way you do your bread pudding. Uh -huh. I'm putting diced bread in the bottom there. And then I've got some raisins soaked in amaretto that I'm going to sprinkle Yum. over the top. And then I've got some melted butter, which I'm going to dip into this. Look at all this gorgeous butter on mm. here. We, uh, 
We live till about 25 years old in England, but we do <laughs> eat well <laughs> in the time. I think time. everything in moderation. I'd rather eat the yes. real ingredients than the synthetic things, and in moderation, I think it's okay. Absolutely right, yes. And then a, a little bit of butter over the top. Oh, my. Okay, and then you have some cream there that right. you can pour over the top of that. Into the egg yolks? Yes, right? and then whisk that into there. All right. Boy, that vanilla smells incredible, doesn't it? It really does, that vanilla. And then you just need to ladle that over this bread and butter right. and fruit. And that's it? And that's all there Basically. is to it. It goes in the oven, 350 degrees, and it's going to be in there until um, it's, it's nicely wow. tender and soft. And it will probably take about, in this dish, I think about 15, 20 minutes. Would this ever be good with a cup of coffee in the morning? Oh, this next morning, <laughs> this is even better than when he's had a chance to set oh, up. Yeah, all of this? Yeah, uh, you're probably getting a, go right to the top because okay. we want to make it like a sort of creme brulee texture right. in there. So we have, you, you know, you're not able to actually slice this. There we go, that's all perfect. Right. So to the oven and then when it comes out, I want you to see if it is the best in the world or at least up there. Oh, I, okay. I, I have an idea. Oh, it smells incredible already. This was in the oven for about 20 minutes. When it comes out, it's nice and golden on the top. And when you touch it, it's still a little bit runny inside. Because oh. we only use egg yolks and not the whole egg, it mm. won't set completely. Now, we've just finished that with some flaked almonds, and they complement that amaretto, that almond liqueur, in the center there. And these give a nice, crunchy texture. It is beautiful. So you don't need to let it rest before you serve it? No, you can serve it straight okay. away because it has its own sort of sauce that goes with it. So, you know, then hopefully when we spoon into this... That looks you know, incredible. Can... Now, what would the royal serve this with? If, would there be any after-dinner drinks or wines or dessert yes. wines? They would serve a dessert wine with this one. And you see there it has its own custard oh, yeah. that it serves beautiful. with it. Uh, the, the dessert wine that they'd serve, uh, they always serve French or German wines. Uh -huh. uh, Britain are just not famous for wines at all. <laughs> Nothing from Napa? No, no, <laughs> What's no. wrong with See, those See, we people? never had any Californian wines at all then. You know, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, uh, well, the, I guess the, so. We just didn't have them. Yeah. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, a good sauterne would be something would be that something. we serve with this. Perfect. Yes. Mmm. That is incredible. It's good. Thank you. Right. It is incredible. And we'll put the recipe on the website. Yes. But I would suggest you get the cookbook. I have it. I love it. Personal stories of Darren's time with the Royals and Princess Di. It is yes. a delightful read. What an honor. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That bread pudding was incredible. It is delicious, and it's really very easy to make. Now, next week, our royal chef is going to share a Tuscan recipe. It's a good one, too. And Tuscan, because he's taking a trip to Tuscany, you could go with him. I'll give you the details about that. Now, if you'd like to buy his cookbook, Eating Royally, I have a link right below me here. You can click on that. This is a wonderful cookbook. Delicious recipes. I've made a lot of them. They're very good. They're royal. and details and fun stories about life with the royals. You'll want to get this one as well. Now, before you leave my site, don't forget, check out my fun friends, Royalty in Our World, on my Hill Country page right up there, and the gals from Water to Wine and Vino, and a cool wine bar you're going to want to check out, Vela, next to Paloma Blanca's. I've got all the details in my Vino section. Till next time, everyone, enjoy.